Larkin. I'm an international student advisor at Texas A&M University, and uh, I'm going to explain um, the difference between F1 and F2, and what the regulations are, and then also the work opportunities that comes between an F1 and an F2, as well as also a J1 and a J2. Uh, so first, let me just explain the big difference between an F1 and a J1 and um, F2 and J2. Um, from a bureaucracy standpoint, F1 and F2's visas are issued um, through the uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, J1 and J2s are through the Department of State. Uh, the big difference is, is most students are on F1s and their dependents, um, spouses and children, uh, are issued F2s. Uh, and the big difference is students who are um, coming in either supported. Um, the big difference between F1 and F2 and J1 and J2 is F1 and F2's visas are issued through the Department of Homeland Security and J1 and J2's are issued through the Department of State. And most students come in on an F1 and their spouses or children are issued F2's and they are either supported by their families or with personal funds or with um, uh, their department sponsors them and gives them a research assistantship or a graduate assistantship. J1 and J2s are usually um, sponsored by some other outside resource not this, which is not the school and is not personal. So, for example, Fulbrights are all J1s and their spouses and children are J2s. And uh, if the government, if, for example, if the country's government uh, is sponsoring their education, they are eligible for a J1 visa. So, for example, we have many students from the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, who are sponsored by their government, and their government pays all their tuition and insurance and everything, and they are sponsored by, or they are eligible for J1 and J2s. The biggest difference are the work regulations when it comes to F1s and J1s and their spouses and children. So if you are an F1 student, you are eligible to work on campus uh, under 20 hours a week during the fall and the spring. Summer and uh, winter breaks, you can work full time, but it also s still has to be on campus. Unfortunately, F2s, um, spouses and children, are not allowed to work at all. Um, another disadvantage of an F2 visa is they can study, but they can't study towards a degree program, uh, and it has to be, it can only be part-time classes as well, too. So if your spouse is thinking about studying uh, full-time, that's a possibility, but the, he or she should come into the ISS office and talk with one of the advisors, because um, applying for what's called a change of status is uh, it's a long process and it takes a lot of thinking and decision making on your part actually. J1 uh, can also work on campus as well too again for under 20 hours per week so it's the same as an F1. Uh, the difference with a J2 is J2s can work uh, and J2s can also study as well too. So there are some advantages to that. There are possibly the only big disadvantage uh, of a J1 or a J2 is that there's a rule that some J1s and J2s have 
which is called a two-year requirement. It's the two-year rule is what you'll hear. And what that rule is is saying that you can study in the United States, but then once you graduate, you have to go back to your home country and stay there for two years. Um, so there's pros and cons to both. Again, most students come in on F1s because they're not sponsored by by their own country's government anyway. Um, but that's basically the difference between the two.